me explain a little bit about the PSMA 4 for those who may not be familiar. First of all, the agent utilized in the experimental arm was PSMA lutetium-177, and the particular form of PSMA was PSMA-617. Now, this has already been FDA approved, and it's termed Covicto for those who use the trade name. I prefer not to use that, so I'll just call this PSMA-617, lutetium-177, or PSMA lutetium for short. We knew from the vision trial previously that there would be a prolongation of survival and an improvement in radiographic progression-free survival. For those patients with metastatic CRPC having a PSMA PET lesion that had progressed after an ARPI, androgen receptor pathway inhibitor, abiraterone and enzalutamide being typical, and at least one taxane, up to two taxanes. The PSMA-4 trial is aimed toward metastatic CRPC, but in the taxane-naive setting. So these are patients with metastatic CRPC with PSMA PET positive lesions who have progressed after an ARPI, but not a taxane. Small caveat to neoadjuvant or adjuvant taxane given more than 12 months ago, but that is a tiny portion of the trial, only about 1%. So the trial design is important because it's a comparison between the PSMA lutetium and an ARPI. And the ARPI that was specified would either be enzalutamide for those with prior abiraterone or abiraterone for those with prior enzalutamide. Now, if we look at the prior treatments, a little more than 50% of the patients enrolled in the trial actually had abiraterone as their primary ARPI. There was a primary endpoint, as with almost all trials, of radiographic progression-free survival. And the radiographic progression-free survival was determined by Blinded Independent Central Review, or Vicker. Now, those people on the control arm were able to cross over and receive the PSMA lutetium if they had RPFS met by Bicker. Now, there were a whole variety of secondary endpoints, and I'll cover some of those in a minute. What did the trial show? An unequivocal benefit for the lutetium compared to the ARPI in terms of the primary endpoint, RPFS. The hazard ratio presented at ESMO was 0.43. The median RPFS for those in the PSMA lutetium arm was 12.02 months as compared to 5.59 months for those who had the second hormone. There were secondary endpoints such as objective response rate. Objective response rate for those with measurable disease was 50.7% for those who were randomized to receive lutetium and less than 20% for those on the ARPI arm. PSA declines. 57% of the patient had a PSA decline of 50% or more in the lutetium arm as compared to only 20% of those on the hormonal arm. In addition, they were looking at a variety of other health-related quality of life and pain endpoints, all of which favored lutetium, as well as SSE, symptomatic skeletal events, strongly favored lutetium. The adverse events were also favoring lutetium when you look at the grade three, four events or the SAE events. Fewer grade three, four AEs in the lutetium arm and fewer SAE events in the lutetium arm. Now, overall survival was an important endpoint. The hazard ratio for the overall survival adjusted for crossover was 0 0.8. 
Now, let me talk about the crossover for a moment because that's very important. 84% of the patients who progressed on the hormonal arm actually crossed over and received the PSMA lutetium. So when we look at this from a crossover adjusted hazard ratio for OS, and we see the 0 0.8, that is favorable and good, but the confidence intervals are big. If we look at the intent to treat, that is going to be 1.16, and that is actually favoring the hormonal arm for overall survival intent to treat, but the number of events as to date are only about 29% of the patients enrolled, and please remember that the crossover is 84%. So from these data, I conclude that the PSMA lutetium is an active agent. We knew this from the Bayesian trial, and now that we scooted up into the metastatic CRPC taxa naive space, we also see this evidence of activity as measured by PSA declines, RPFS benefit, and overall response rate benefit, as well as a health-related quality of life. It's too early to say what the regulators will say, but I simply believe that these data represent the PSMA lutetium is highly active in the context of the taxane naive metastatic CRPC patient with PSMA PET positivity.